Hey everyone, this is Blackbinder, and today I figured I'd go over, this isn't an entire class guide, but it is the Technomage Class Evolution Guide. That is a new thing in 1.6 where the Archmage can undergo a class evolution. Originally you unlock it, but after that you spend a Prodigy Point to unlock it. Uh, and it's a set of three extra talent trees, class trees, that let you utilize Steam along with your magic powers. You kind of mix them up, so like a lightning rod plus lightning, stuff like that. Thematically, anyway. Um, now, uh, the way you unlock the Technomage the first time is you need to learn Tinkers, the two Tinker trees, Physics and Chemistry, and then have at least 16 generic points spread out over both of them. And then you just make, you continue making Tinkers, and eventually it'll unlock for you. Um, you just you go to the Tinker menu and just keep making them. But uh, after that, you can recreate... The easiest way to do that is in Embers of Rage, where Tinkers only cost 100 gold per category. Uh, you can do it in the Age of Ascendancy, the original campaign, but it's really... It's difficult. It takes a lot longer, and you have to be... You at least have to have a Tinker Escort, which I found is not 100%. I used to think it was 100%, but I... I I've tried to do it before and I didn't end up getting one. So just do yourself a favor, unlock it in Embers of Rage, and then you can take it. See right down here, the Technomancer Class Evolution. Uh, let's see. Now, um, it basically, it will uh, unlock three, one specific tree that you choose, either Galvanic, Terrain or Occult. Occult is probably the best, and we'll go over that later, but Occult is Arcane and... Where is it? Arcane and Temporal. Terrain is Freezing and Physical. And then Galvanic is Fire and Lightning. So Galvanic is pro will probably be your first choice, but it's not actually the best. It is it is good, just not as good as uh, Occult Technomancy or probably even Terrain. Terrain is the more defensive one. But uh, we'll go over that later. So, we I'm not going to go over the full stats and skills things. I will go over the skill trees that go with each uh, individual tree. But, um, like, I won't be going over meta or temporal even. Even though temporal is a portion of a cult, it doesn't really use temporal, the temporal tree at all. So, we'll go over that when we get there. So, first off, Galvanic Technomancy. Actually, first, first off... When you make, when you unlock the class, however way you do it, class evolution or the other way by making tinkers, you need to craft an arcane dynamo. Arcane dynamo, basically what it does is it gives you steam for mana. Uh, where, where the hell is it? Talents granted arcane dynamo. Then we'll go in and check. Where is it? All right, Arcane Dynamo. First off, this lets without this, you can't even use your Technomancy spells, but also it grants a magical steam reserve that regenerates three steam per 10 mana spent. It grants spell power based on the current steam level, currently 60 at 100% steam filled, which is a decent amount of spell power, and outside of combat, you relax and let your steam reserve slowly wither away. That's not good. So, whenever you're not in combat, you'll have a negative two steam generation. It's very, in the way these trees are set up, you want to be able to use all of the spells at first because they're gonna be like right in the beginning of combat, especially with Galvanic because you gotta set up your fields. Well, you don't have to, but you should. Um, because of that, you wanna be using these right at the start of the fight. So that negative steam regeneration is a pain. So pretty much for every tree, there's no reason not to use a steam generator. Just put a steam generator on. It'll make your life a lot easier because like I said, these spells are gonna hit harder than pretty much any other spell you have. The arcane, uh, the uh, technomancer trees are gonna hit, their main spells are gonna hit a lot harder than your other ones. So, but yeah, that's what arcane dynamo is. It's supposed to give you steam when you spend mana, but that's not worth it. Just get a steam generator. All right. So, Galvanic Rod. This is the first one in the Fire and Lightning tree. What this does is it basically sets down a rod. 
and then it does AOE damage around around that rod. And it does quite a bit. At 5 out of 5, mine does 568 galvanic damage, which is fire and lightning. Now that's not that great that it's split damage, but it's still, it does enough damage to where it's worth it over like flame. My, my flame spell does 573 damage, but that's split over three turns and it's not as big of an area either. And then, well, it's in a straight line. It might have the same surface area. I don't actually know. You'll have to do the math on that, but uh, yeah. It's going to do a lot of damage and a really decent AoE. Now, each rod, you can have up to three, but they each have their own nine-turn cooldown. So, um, but really, that doesn't matter to me. Basically, what it means is you've got about seven turns in between uh, casts of three rods. So, I'll usually just start the fight off by blowing everything up with a galvanic rod. But... Uh, now, this can activate Burning Wake, which is a wildfire talent, which we'll go over later. And it can also uh, activate, where are you? Hurricane. Where is it? Oh, it's down here. Hurricane, which we'll go over that later as well. All right, Galvanic Arcing. This, um, not so great, but uh, this makes your the rods that you put down last for 25 turns. And that lets you link them up. When you can link two rods together, at three out of five, it's got seven range, which is pretty high. And then three rods, the two rods, it just makes a line. But if you do three rods, it makes a triangle, which is the best, which is what you should be trying to use if you're going to use this. The problem is, I have one main target right here, right? So, well, let's just, let's do this with the target dummy. I have one main target. I want him in the middle, though. Screw it, close enough. Now I wanna hit him with all three rods, but I also wanna make a triangle. So you're gonna to have to finagle the way you're casting it. So basically you put one down there, see it's at the edge of my triangle, and then kind of angle the triangle or angle it towards yourself. There we hit him again. And then the third one will hit it there. And that's technically a triangle. You see all those little lines. That means I've made a galvanic area. Now what the galvanic area does, is it does 84 galvanic damage per turn. Not um, not amazing, and you don't need to do it, but uh, you do get some benefits to it other than damage, which we'll go over now. Um, at level three, which is what I'm at now, all creatures are shocked, reducing their stun and pin resistances by half. Decent enough. And at level five, that lets your the weapon you're using act as a rod so long as it's metallic or embedded with a metallic tinker and I think mana coil counts which is what you should be using for your metallic tinker um, and then that lets you act as a uh, as a um, a rod so then it makes it so we only really need to do two to get the galvanic area and that, what that really does is it makes the galvanic area... Oh, that's right. I don't have a tinker in my... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I took off my weapon. I'll, I'll have to show you guys why. It's an amazing weapon, and I was down to my last life. I didn't want to lose it. Charwind. Look at this. 30% uh, lightning and fire damage, so it's perfect for this build. Um... 18 crit multiplier, 25 spell power, 19% crit, crit chance, but also talent on hit spell fire flash, 10% at level 6. That's insane. Which my fire flash right now is only, I think, 6.2. Or 6.5. But that's 622 damage and a 6 radius. It's huge. The only problem is it hurts you a lot. Even with um, wildfire on, which reduces the damage by 91%. It can still hit you quite hard. Where is it? Well, it got absorbed by my disruption shield, but it can still hit you hard, especially it, I'm only level 39 and I don't have my crit multiplier or fire damage up as high as I want it to. So it just gets more dangerous as you go on. And I've only got 588 health. So if my shield comes off and that hits me, I'm screwed. It's not going to kill me, but it's going to do a decent chunk of damage. The highest I've seen it hit me is like 250 damage so far. Uh, okay, going on. 
Anyway, at level five, you can make your triangle thing at one cast less, so you can put the rod wherever you want, your third rod. Uh, every time I say rod, it sounds dirty. <laughs> Unstable Blast, this is the second most used spell I use in this whole tree. I don't normally try to go for the galvanic area if I don't need it, but this one, um, I'm always looking to use it if I can. Uh, this will create a blast of radius one around your rod. And then it, Unstable Blast, stuns the target, or it tries to. Yeah, see, it stunned it for three turns. Doesn't do a ton of damage, at least not at one out of five. It, it'll get up to the same amount as Galvanic Rod, but the, from what I can tell, the, uh, the stun amount doesn't co go up. It's always stunned for three. Actually, no, it is going up. Okay, it goes up to seven turns. Seven turns done. But I don't need it to be a seven turns done. So two out of five is fine unless you're using it for the damage. The only problem is usually I like to hit it on them and then they move away. And then by the time I want to use this, they're out of the radius one because it only does a radius one. So that's the area, the square around the rod, one tile square radius. But yeah. It is useful for when you need to cut down someone's damage, but for the most part, you're gonna be doing so much damage, most things are gonna die anyway. But for the Rand bosses, you can get them in a galvanic area to reduce their stun resistance and then unstable blast them. But remember, you're gonna to have to set that up so that they walk into the area because by the time you get two or three casts of, of your rods off to make your triangle area, it's not gonna they're not gonna be in the same spot. So you gotta kinda of think ahead. Energy mass conversion, I almost never use this. Uh, using large amounts of arcane power, you create a supercharged, unstable blast in your rods. The extra energy is briefly converted into a huge mass, pulling in all creatures, but you in the range of three to six to seven to eight, probably at five out of five, of any rod towards the center of the galvanic field. Um, it can only be used with a triangle setup. So basically you set up your triangle and oh no, they got out of it. So the idea is then you use your um, mass conversion to drag them back, but it does no damage. So, I mean, I guess it's a basically a radius six knockback or a radius eight knockback, but I just never found myself using it because I'd rather teleport away than risk them resisting the knockback effect of this, like just teleport or movement speed and fusion away. But yeah, that is Galvanic Technomancy. Now it's fire and lightning, so basically you're just gonna go a regular fire mage build. You want burning wake with wildfire, cleansing flames just to get stuff off of you because you are gonna be taking a lot of fire damage and then obviously max out wildfire because you really need that reduced fire damage um, to yourself because fire flash is gonna be doing a lot of damage to you. Now with this build, I rarely find time to use flame, but it's gonna get you to level 25, so just max it out and you will use it as filler some of the time. Now, I haven't gotten to this part of the build yet with this character, but after that, you want to go into air and get Thunderstorm. It's just sustained mana 50, and it's a really good, uh, it's a really good, oh my god, it's a really good uh, sustainability. Now, the problem here is whether or not you also want to unlock the Storm Tree. The problem being is Hurricane is very nice. Uh, it, it, it gives all of your lightning spells a chance to daze the target. 36% chance to create, <coughs> excuse me. It summons a hurricane on them. It's what uh, those annoying tornadoes do and Urkus does to you that does a ton of damage to you and the radius around them. So it's a lot of AOD, AOE damage, but it's also a lot of passive damage that you don't have to cast. Single passive single target damage. You just cast your regular lightning spells, which you're going to be doing anyway through the galvanic rod. And, uh, but, uh, you have to remember it's, uh, only has a 25% chance to activate hurricane. So it's going to be a lower per percentage chance, but still you're going to be doing plenty of lightning damage. You want to get it. And then tempest just increases your lightning penetration. But here's the problem with this. All right. We don't need to unlock unlock Tinkers because we got it through the class evolution. So we've got four category points to play with. We need Wildfire, 
And then we get Galvanic Technomancy. We don't need to spend it on there. So if we unlock, where is it? Storm down here, that's two spent. We need to unlock meta. The reason we unlock meta is because you have to use an inscription slot for dissipation rune anyway, which makes meta just the straight up better. It's better to spend a point in meta than to get another inscription. So that's three of your points gone already. And then your fourth point, I guess you can go in an inscription, but it really limits you on where else you can go. Um, I guess you could take another Technomancy tree. But for this build, I was going to go into the Storm tree just because your damage is going to be split in Galvanic Rod anyway, Fire and Lightning. So you might as well go into Storm and at least take use of that. But yeah. Um, that's up to you. You don't have to go into the storm tree. You can just go flame or lightning separately and this the galvanic rod still gonna do a ton of damage um, Right now except the changes I've got plus 70% fire damage or no plus 52% fire. Actually, I think I have more lightning on this guy Yeah, I do 72% more lightning damage because of one of my I think it's my hat. What was it? Something I have has a ton of lightning penetration or damage on it. Where is it? All right, here, my belt. 20% lightning penetration, 30% lightning damage. So even though I was a fire mage, I figured I'd, I'd use it anyway. But anyway, look at this. It does 265 lightning and 234 fire. And they've got roughly the same 52 and 70 damage percentage added to it. So whichever one you go, gonna... Whichever one you go, it's still going to raise your damage by a decent amount if you want to just stack one or the other. But uh, with the usefulness of the Storm Tree, I think it's just wise to go into it for Hurricane and then Tempest as well. Just to... It frees up a lot of your itemization points for Lightning Penetration. But anyway, yeah, that's the Fire and Lightning Tree. So now let's go over the Terrine Techromancy. This is... This is physical and cold, but we will only be doing cold most likely. Or, sorry, physical. Again, you are still going to want meta. Where are you? Earth, and do we go stone with this? Yeah, I think we do. Stone, it's mostly for crystalline focus, but earthen missiles do end up doing a decent amount of damage. They're not terrible, it's just, it's not as fun as blowing things up with pulverizing auger over and over again via stone skin and uh, body of stone, if you can get it. Um, all right, let's go over the first one. Micro Spider Bot. I'm just going to read these because this, this one's super weird. You build one Micro Spider Bot from the earthly elements around you. Spider Bots are powered as arcane cryogenic power unit directly linked to your own power. Uh, spider Bots will deal 21 terrain damage, physical and cold, each turn to their target. The deep cold of the attack has a 25% chance to freeze the feet of the target, pinning it to the ground for five turns. That's really good. We want to stay away from enemies throwing this on them. I really wish it was 0% of a turn, but still, that's good. If a target dies, the spider bot will then jump to a new target, which is, that's that's the saver here, because you can throw it on, you can throw it on a weak guy who you see in range of yourself and kill him, and it'll jump to, hopefully, the ran boss that's somewhere behind him. So you don't necessarily have to waste a turn while you're in sight of a difficult boss. You can use the fodder to help you get it, get these on top of them. Uh, if there are multiple spider bots on a single target and more free targets are in range, they will dispatch on as many as possible. If there are multiple spider bots on a single target, they attack as one, stacking their dam damage but with diminishing returns and trying to freeze once. So you can stack the damage, but the freeze chance only happens once, 25% chance. You can maintain up to three spider bots. That goes up and each can last up to nine turns, but spider bots need to be in sight to be able to act. So you do need to be able to see them. But again, just move along with them and you're fine. The cooldown of the spell is affected by Body of Stone. Uh, oh, down here, Body of Stone, it, uh, where is it? 20% at one out of five, which is fine. But you will take that up more later. The only problem with Body of Stone is it roots yourself. But if you're rooting everything else, that, that kind of works. And you can just turn it off. It's 0% of a turn. All right, let's go on to Cryogenic Digs. Now, these all seem kind of crappy until we reach a certain point in the tree, and I'll point that out when we get there. Each time a spider bot expires, it digs around, producing either a glacial vapor, 45 cold damage and doing 30% more damage to wet targets, or earthquake, 37 
physical damage and 25% chance to stun the target for tur two turns of, of radius one that lasts for three turns. Those special kinds of glacial vapor and earthquake do not affect the caster. Now, who the heck knows where we're going to need a glacial vapor after nine turns, right? Because these last nine turns at one out of five, it'll actually go up the last longer than nine turns. So that seems super crappy, right? Okay, well, let's go to the next one. Ramming bot. Command a random spider bot to jump onto your target at ramming speed. The impact destroys the bot, which triggers this cryogenic dig. Okay, so it is actually useful. You'll almost never use it when they actually expire because most of the fight should be over by then and you have no clue where the target's going to be in nine turns anyway. Um, this creates a radius three explosion dealing 281 terrain damage to all creatures while also freezing them for three turns and rendering them wet for six turns. So this is where we start seeing a decent amount of damage and usability for this tree. Not only is it triggering an AOE, but it's doing a decent amount of damage. Because this micro spider bot, yeah, the pin and the freeze is nice, but it's really not a lot of damage right now. But now we're seeing more use of them with ramming bot and cryogenic digs. Spider bot shield. Now this is the one I think is the most powerful, but it's it's a weird version of bone shield. So let's let's go over it. You call back up to three spider bots to create a protective barrier for 12 turns. Spider bots have 56 life and they take damage in order, always fully absorbing the blow that destroyed them. So basically, it's a bone shield with a 56 damage threshold. So it is actually good, even though the shield amount is small, the shield amount almost doesn't matter. Like the 56 shield that one puts on you or 170-ish, a little less than 170 that they put on you is not good, but it fully absorbs a hit when you get hit. So. It is, it is really good, it just sounds weird. If cryogenic dig is active when a spider bot is destroyed, it jumps to the attacker and triggers the dig there. So even better for this. It's not gonna trigger the dig where you are. Right before it dies, it's gonna jump to the target and trigger the uh, glacial vapors or earthquake where they are, which is really nice. Um, this, is a, this is my, this was the second one I picked. I picked a galvanic first, and then I picked this one. This is probably my second favorite in power. Like it's not, for ease of use, uh, occult technomancy and then galvanic, because galvanic you just blow, you blow stuff up. Um, you just cast your rods at the beginning of the fight and most things are dead by the time you run out of them. No, but this one power wise is probably one of the better ones. It kind of goes half and half with occult. It's definitely the more, if you're having problems staying alive, this one's better, but uh, occult technomancy is just so cool, so. All right, what do we want here? Five out of five for pulverizing auger, stone skin, bring it up as much as you want, but you wanna get it at three out of five because that'll get you up to like 80% chance to reduce the cooldown of pulverizing auger or any other earth spell by two. So basically what that means is you hit pulverizing auger when someone's next to you, then they hit you. Well, then you have a an 80% chance to reset that. So you can just keep casting your most powerful spell. Um, Hold on just a second. I don't know if that actually works with ramming bot. The cooldown of this body this spell, it's affected by body of stone, they say that, but it doesn't say stone skin, so I really don't know. Mudslide, get at least one point, and then stone wall, get a bunch of points here, as many as you can spare, because this will let you reset the fight. Um, you will need some kind of mana regain, though, for stone wall to really be a good reset, which, I mean, I don't, I don't normally use it, but I might have a mana regain for the final boss fight, depending on how how lucky I got with uh, drops, loot drops. All right, and then the cold tree. Here's the here's where, where are you? I don't know if I would go or not. I think I would either go physical or cold because, or ice because they just, I don't know. I, I don't see them going together very well. I could be wrong, but the problem with the ice tree is that you have to be level 24 or 22 before you can get to utter cold. And before that, before that, all your ice spells are going to be doing so little damage because they freeze the targets. And without utter cold, you have no, you can't pierce ice blocks. So you're basically shielding all your enemies. And then seriously, like my freeze would be doing, it says 245 in here, but it would seriously be doing like half that if at all to the to the main target 
and I'd just be blowing up the own, my own shields that I make. And at le low levels, you're not going to have the mana to do that. So I would really... I would advise starting with earth and stone and then picking up ice if you have the extra points, which you may or may not. I... I don't know. I would probably leave ice and then just go heavy into terrain, earth, and stone, and then meta, obviously. And then also you need to get go into arcane for disruption shield, but that's... That's base stuff. We don't need to go over that. But yeah. Terrain Technomancy, good for defenses. And okay on damage, but it's probably the worst of the three for damage. All right, Occult Technomancy, this is probably the best one overall. Uh, the reason why is these are all split damage. Occult Technomancy is the only one that you can go purely one damage, which is Arcane. The reason you can do that is because of... Where are you? Aether. Aether Avatar... It turns all the damage that would normally be split between Arcane and Temporal to just Arcane. So all you have to do is beef up Arcane damage. And then that on top of going Arcane Amplification Drone, which also does Arcane, means that you have a ton of damage that you can do. With Arcane Amplification Drone 2, uh, when you shoot a beam spell through it, like Mana Thrust, you'll hit your target... And you'll also activate the Arcane Amplification Drone. So you'll hit them twice. One with your regular spell. And then another which is almost twice as powerful as that. So, And then in an AoE. So Arcane Amplification Drone is a really good prodigy. If you're going to go Occult Technomancy. It might be good for the others too. But this one specifically. Because you're going to be gr you're gonna be um, building Arcane Damage and Penetration anyway. Now Metaphasic Spin. This, the, this is the weirdest one. Because you're using a saw blade, if that, if that makes sense. You wear it on your belt. But anyway, I'll, I'll just read it and, so you can understand its ridiculousness. All right, metaphasic spin. You imbue a steam saw with arcane and temporal forces, making it spin very fast around your waist, ignoring requirements. The saw spins so fast that it disturbs space-time around you, increasing your spell bar, power, power by up to 15, then goes up to 60. Um, this was my most successful run with an arcane mage. I died on the last boss in Embers of Rage, but I mean, everybody does. So your spell critical chance by up to four and your mana regain by up to 0.9, depending on steam saw tier. So it's good for mana regain too. And each successful melee attack against you also triggers an automatic steam saw attack that cannot miss dealing 151% weapon damage as occult damage, arcane and temporal. The steam saw used will provide its bonus as if it was worn, but you cannot block with it. So basically, it's as if you hit a target and you were a steam saw user with 5 out of 5 and steam saw mastery. Uh, the only thing is it can't miss. The steam saw used will provide its bonus as if it was worn. Increases steam saw's weapon. This also is a steam saw mastery. Increases steam saw's weapon damage by 34% and uses mag magic instead of strength to determine their damage. So it's going to scale off of magic instead of uh, strength. If using either avatar, all occult technomancy spells will become usable for its duration and all occult damage becomes pure arcane. This is awesome. Also, if you don't know how to make a steam saw, that'll let you make it. Reality Breach. This is the sweetest spell. Spin your saw at incredible speeds for an instant, fully breaking reality in a three-wide beam in front of you. Uh, any creatures caught by the beam will take 271 occult damage and are un untethered from reality, reducing their global speed by 6 and the speed of any projectiles they fire by 36%. At level 3, any projectiles caught in the beam are instantly annihilated. At level 5, the beam is so strong that all creatures caught inside are knocked back by 3. The breach is so deep that the beam will always have the maximum possible length it can, which is range 10. Now, I don't know if you can understand that, but this is... Ignore the ignore the corners on this. Just the middle three. That's three in a range ten. That is awesome. And it sounds so cool. It's like doof, doof, every fucking time it goes off. It's awesome. It's the coolest spell effect in the game with the sound effects and the visual of it too. It's so cool. They did a really good job with this. Um, but yeah, this has everything you want. It's a decent debuff. Uh, it uh, somewhat protects you from projectiles. And it's a knockback. Very, very good spell. And the real steam. You reach out through the Aether to all creatures in sight that were slowed by Reality Breach or Congeal Time, which I almost never use. But maybe you can for this. Who knows? Uh, but with your uh, Reality Breach, you really don't need it. 
For each target, you create a link of arcane infused steam to it that lasts seven turns. Anytime the target uses a talent, one of your cooling down spells is reduced by one, prioritizing technomancy spells. That's good. Each turn the length is up, the target and any creature inside the link takes 15 occult damage. That's crap. Doesn't matter. As long as at least one link is up, the cooldown of your metaphasic spin spell is set to six turns instead of 30. I don't actually know exactly what that means because metaphasic, I'm pretty sure this, um, every time you get hit with this, it hits them. I'm thinking maybe if, I'm thinking what this is up to is, is you link something and then they, uh, disrupt you or mana clash you and it gets rid of your metaphasic spin so you only have to wait six turns to reactivate it because your uh the steam saw attack is going off more than once every 30 turns so i could be wrong on that but i don't think so i think it's just for the disruption or mana clash like uh dispelling your sustains so this is okay uh, the main problem with the Occult Technomancy is that uh, when you don't have either Avatar going, which it's got a 36 turn cooldown and only works for, I think, 9 turns at max, um, when you don't have that, you're going to run out of filler. Between um, Reality Breach, which is a cooldown 6, and Mana Thrust, which is a cooldown 3, you can get them down to 2 and 5 with meta and enough uh, cooldown on items, but because of that... Um, they're big, powerful spells, but you don't have a lot of spells to cast, if that makes sense. And this helps with that. But, I mean, it's passive, so... Like, you're going to be you're gonna be doing Reality Breach anyway. And if you have no filler to use, just use this anyway. And then it's going to lower the cooldown for your stuff. Hopefully, Reality Breach every time. But, yeah, I, I didn't... I honestly, I didn't use it that often. I would just, I would reposition if I had nothing to cast or cast something like Arcane Vortex. All right, Metaphasic Echoes. Using your sheer arcane power, you keep breaches in space time open for three turns. Each turn, you, that's a typo. Each turn you, they are open, you project an occult clone of your saw along each breach. Now, this, this is really good. I like this one. Um, Damaging any creature caught for 78 occult weapon damage. The saw, so this is, this procs your saw things, okay? So if your saw has a 20% chance to lower global speed by 60%, this will proc that. Uh, the saw cuts both in a physical and arcane way, reducing the duration of a random beneficial effect on each target by one each time. Each target can only be affected once per turn. This spell is only usable for one turn after casting Reality Breach. But any reality breach cast during its duration is also recorded inside. I don't know what that means. Um, I don't know what that means at all. I don't even have a guess of what it means. But I know how it works. So basically you cast Aether Breach. Let's say we cast it like this. It goes that way, right? Well then we, all, then we cast uh, Metaphasic Echoes. And that sends our saw blade out this way once every turn for a few turns. And every time it's hitting for... Uh, either occult or arcane damage, depending if we have either avatar activated. And um, <clears throat> it's really nice because a lot of things will be almost dead, but this is going to go through them. But it also, over its life, does do decent damage, especially if you find a good steam saw. And then on top of that, if you get a really good steam saw with a good, good added effects on it, like slow or um, even a gloom one, it doesn't say gloom anymore, but it's 25% chance to, or 20% chance to pin, confuse, or slow, like, or stun, it'll add those to them as well. And it's going, like, it's just gonna, it's gonna go in that, uh, direction once you cast it for the entire time. You can't change its direction. So make sure it's better to use it in, um, doorways like this, or if you're going, like, in the steam giant, Last the last area of Embers of Rage, it was good to cast in a diagonal because it's a big spiral at the end of the game. So I was hitting everyone in that huge because remember it's a three wide saw. Um, it it was hitting everybody and it's what was the range on it? I think it's six, right? No, it's range ten. Okay, but uh, yeah.
All right, but remember, you have to do um, you have to cast Reality Breach before you cast Metaphase Geckos. But that makes sense because this is most likely going to kill everything anyway, so you might not even need Metaphasic Echoes. But yeah, out of the three, my favorite is definitely Occult Technomancy. Not only does it have the cool factor, sound effects, and graphics, but it's also the only one that isn't split damage. And if you guys have watched any of my guides or my Let's Plays, I really don't like split damage. The only reason it's good for Technomage is because all the spells are so strong, it kind of gets over that. And also, in Insane, you really, you really can build two things especially two different damage types especially now that they lowered the penetration to 70 percent that's as much as you can get it's not as hard to max out spell penetration on on uh multiple elements especially as an arc mage when you're getting what's wildfire i think 50 percent yeah you're already getting 52 percent fire and lightning resistance if you go storm penetration so 18 percent resistance penetration, that's one item and you'll probably go over the 70 percent but yeah, for prodigies, definitely go arcane amplification device if you're going either or occult technomancy. For other ones, I did go meteoric crash just for fun. It it wasn't very good though. I mean, it did it was maxing out at like 1500 damage, 1200 to 1500 damage, and all my other stuff was doing way more, um, like double that easy. And this has a 15 turn cooldown as well, so it kind of. It kind of goes with, uh, where is it, the terrain spell tree, because if you see here, it your fire damage bonus and resistance penetration is set to your current highest damage bonus and resistance penetration. This applies to all fire damage you deal. It kind of goes with the physical one, because this also does physical damage, but you could also take it if you're going galvanic, and then you don't you don't need to go fire damage bonus or penetration at all. You can stack lightning in this. That's kind of the power side to this if you're going galvanic. And for physical, it just scales better better with physical because it's going to have a... Uh, because it does half physical damage. What else? Ethereal forms good. Cauterize is okay if you're going to randomly get one shot, but I didn't have a problem with that. I just got killed on the end because the boss is hard. Uh... But yeah, those are really the only ones I would take. Cauterize, maybe. Arcane amplica Amplification Drone, definitely. I don't know how Arcane Might would work with uh, the Sawblade. I'm sure it would stack. But, I mean, I don't know that that's worth it for just one spell. To increase the damage of one spell and then your melee retaliation. Don't know. Uh, hidden Resources is a possibility if you really don't want to worry about mana regain. But yeah, I would I would go Ar Arcane Amplification Drone, and then for f Fire and Lightning or Galvanic, I would definitely do Meteor Crash, just because you're getting 70% uh, resistance penetration possibly, and possibly like 200% fire damage bonus, and that's active all the time. So yeah, that actually might be the power choice for Galvanic. <laughs> that's funny. I thought I, I never thought I'd say that about Meteor Crash. The, the funny thing is when I took this, I was in a cult, so. <laughs> It really wasn't that great. But, yep, that's where we're going to leave it off for now. Um, Technomancer is really fun. Uh, I tried all three trees qu quite a bit. I did try unlocking it without going to Embers of Rage, and then someone told me in chat, why don't you just do it in Embers of Rage? And I was like, I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> but, all right, that's where we're going to leave it off for today. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to start a new Let's Play. I haven't decided yet. Somebody suggested Archer, which I know they got nerfed, so I might do that. Um, and somebody suggested something else. I need to go look what the other one was. So if I don't get any other suggestions, I'm just going to toss a coin between those two and then play whichever one it is. So we'll talk to you guys later. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. And to the one person who disliked my video, even though I asked you to, how dare you?